welcome to both of you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Pleasure to be here. Lan Yang, let me start with you. Give me a sense. We just saw these images of the space. Very exciting to have this preview. Tell me about the philosophy you had with your design here. So, um, you know, it was, um, it was really a, a, a process where we were very conscious of two things, I would say. We were very conscious of the fact that we were working um, within, you know, a piece of Boston's social history at the Arsenal, um, uh, an industrial building from the late 1800s. And um, we were also very conscious of the fact that we were working for um, the, a center for the arts, um, you know, an arts organization that caters to a diversity of arts programs and activities, and also a diversity of age groups. Um, and so, you know, I think our, our main design challenge was one that asked the question, how can we bring the public into this space um, in the most honest and respectful way uh, to make, share, and experience art, um, and to have the best cultural experience possible. Well, I'll return to that in a moment, but Henry, let me ask you, you began working with the Arsenal structure years ago. What is the opportunity that old buildings like this present as we look at them through a 21st century prism? Jared, there's, there are a number of uh, really special cases that sites of this scale offer. And one of those is to open a place that has basically been held away from the whole community for generations and then begin to make it public. And that's the reason that having the theater here and then accompanying restaurants and so forth is, is very exciting. And in this particular instance, we were working with 14 different buildings and our work was really restricted to the exteriors. And much of that had to do with uh, erasing damage that had been done by the Department of Defense in an attempt to reduce um, energy, uh, energy consumption. They had just smashed through thousands of windows and changed the masonry in association with that. So much of what we were doing here was on the exterior. And at the same time, we were doing mass mocha, which was largely about interiors. And that back and forth was very interesting. And we were, we're very excited. Sasaki was an important partner to us even back then because they helped the city uh, or the town of Watertown um, disciplined the developer. Let me just put it that way. Well, Lan Yang, going back to what you have done here, how does it, does it being in a, an historical complex, a place so rich with history that you can see, can you feel that? Does that come to the fore in your design too? I hope so. You know, I think for us, um, you know, I think it's important to, to recognize first that there was a renovation um, that came um, after the, the arsenal ceased to be um, an arsenal and ceased to be a, a place for, for making um, guns and gun carriages, that there was a 2004 renovation to the um, original industrial building. And at that time, you know, that renovation really sought to capitalize on the volume of that industrial space. And it carved up the building into uh, additional floor plates and um, so, you know, when we came on the scene, uh, for us, it was really a, a process of removal, a process of uncovering the original spatial uh, character and volume of, of the building as much as we, we could. Um, so I think that was uh, in, one, in many ways, one way that we tried to bring back the original character of, this, of the building by trying to recreate the large volume of the space to, as much as we could. You have done a lot of work in, in educational centers, cultural spaces, very democratic spaces. You talked about some of that in your first answer. What is a 20, 2021 cultural space? How, how, how does the architecture fuel people gathering as they do on a regular basis for galleries, for shows coming together? I think, you know, in this instance, um, um, we were very conscious of, a, of designing a space that was dedicated to artistic production and exploration, that the architecture is not intended to be the main character, you know, in this experience. Really, the architecture is meant to be a scaffold um, for the artistic production and consumption and sharing of the center, uh, its participants and its visitors. 
And so I think that, um, you know, the architecture enables all of that wonderful creative activity to happen. Henry, how do you look at the, the dichotomy of what was, this was an arsenal, it was a ballistics range. We just heard about some of that too. With, with taking that history, what people might not understand about this stretch of buildings versus how they're used today. Restaurants, as you say, theater space. Well, Jared, it's an important question. Um, the, the crude history, which most people don't realize, is that every time there was a war, we built a bigger gun. And in order to build a bigger gun, we built a bigger building. And you can trace that right across the site. Um, between World War I and World War II, building 311, which is on Arsenal Street, doubled in length. And that all had to do with the scale of gun emplacements. I could never get the developer to be interested in investing in, in an interpretive overlay on the site. I kept trying to get a Rodman cannon. And I've shared with Darren uh, engravings of women with parasols walking through topiary, which were really stacks of cannonballs. And none of those things is there now. And it's not just the arsenal site in which that disappointment registers. Architecture for historic buildings in general does not communicate. I mean, there's that Ry Cooter song, aren't you glad that things can't talk? Buildings are mute. They are most unhelpful in, in bringing their past into a reality that can register today. And one of the things that uh, we really like is using photo large scale photographs that make people realize that there are other human beings in those spaces in previous times and connecting that without a lot of didactic material of the kind that you're used to seeing in national trust sites where these are the five stages in the creation of indigo dye. Uh, so just having people there and making them aware that it had these previous uses, I think, I think that that's an important connection, which we typically miss. And Lining has a chance to make it a little more relevant than typical office spaces would. And before we go back to that, let me just ask too, we can be very good in this country sometimes at destroying our past. We've, we've gone through generations where we don't recognize and value the architecture and the design that has come before. How did these buildings survive? They were, they were protected, I think, uh, well, actually, they went into a lengthy decline. But mill buildings in general uh, were simply raw space that allowed for a lot of innovative activity. And also, they housed a lot of industries in decline. So that there was a kind of penumbra in which those historic buildings existed, which is very different from a historic structure on the Harvard campus or something. Lan Ying. This is going to be a very different space. We just saw it. it's going to be a very different space than, than when most of us laughed, last left it pre-pandemic. It's, it's very open now. Uh, tell us about some of the things you're most excited about in terms of this design. Well, I think, um, you know, we, we, one of the most exciting things was we, we reconceived of the entry. You know, I think many people just didn't know that the Mazazian Center was there. Um, it wasn't that visible from the street um, and from the uh, open spaces on the campus. And so we uh, designed a new canopy um, that will um, receive visitors uh, to the building. And um, you know, it's it's a very I think respectful design of the historic building. It's all uh, black uh, metal. It's um, uh, you know it's supported by steel rods that are bracketed back to the historic building. Um, you know the connection details are very uh, straightforward and and honest, um, reminiscent of the industrial era of architecture. And um, you know the canopy was also an opportunity to create a real marquee to announce the events of the day. Um, so that that's really exciting. And then once you walk through the doors, uh, the space is much is very open. Um, you can see activity going on. Uh, there's clear wayfinding. You know, we try to to create a neutral backdrop for the art activities and for the flow of people. So you know, the walls are white gallery walls. Um, there are no ceilings. We used a spray applied um, acoustic material um, to the underside of the deck um, and the mechanical systems. Um, to you know, be reminiscent of industrial spaces, and it's also a very cost-effective um, treatment. 
Um, and we also, um, you know, requested that we could um, strip away some of the paint from the original brick walls to um, bring back some of the original um, uh, materials of the building. And then we only used, um, you know, warmer um, materials w in the places where uh, visitors would be close to the architecture. So such as the reception desk and the bar, we used um, wood, uh, oak material for the surfaces, the countertop surfaces, and we used a, a blackened metal um, for some of the surfaces of the millwork. So to harken back to the, you know, the gun making um, heritage and history of the building. Let me close by asking both of you, here I am at GBH in our newsroom. This is not a virtual background. This is our actual newsroom. It's a very different building from what it was a year ago. So I'll start with both of you. Henry, I'll start with you to ask, what is a building coming out of a pandemic, especially knowing that the arsenal has already been through one? So it has seen that history. I don't have a magical answer to that. I assume it's going to be a, a hybrid workspace with a glut of offices and, uh, and a tremendous amount of imaginative rebirth of um, retail and restaurant activities that places that have failed now will be experimenting with new ways to reopen uh, under new ownerships, in fact, and that it will take a while, but I think that there will be a reconfiguration which will continue to be hybrid. Lan Ying, we look at buildings now and whereas a year or two ago, we were very concerned about energy efficiency and keeping windows closed and air locked in. We're taking a second look, I would imagine at this point and, and wondering if we have been designing buildings correctly given the year that we've just been through. So how did that factor into your design? Well, I think, um... You know, I mean, I don't have the, the answer either, but um, I do think that one of the things that we're all learning throughout this, this awful pandemic is that, you know, really the value of being together and the value of coming together in a place physically together. And I think that architecture um, has always done that uh, throughout the ages, throughout history, and I think um, it will continue to do so. And the arts are a wonderful uh, way to come back together and, and celebrate that. I'd I like to underscore to that because in a way, the COVID in relation to occupying physical space is a little bit like people saying television was going to kill cinema. And yet going to the movies turned out to be a communal experience. Well, I look forward to being back there in that space. I look forward to having people back in this space. <laughs> <laughs> but in the meantime, it's, wonder it's been wonderful to be with both of you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Happy GBH. Thank you very much, Jared. Wonderful to be here.